Hello and welcome to the next StableNet Snapshot YouTube video. Today's video is going to be about the new StableNet feature called Multiple Monitor Thresholds. As an example for the video, I've prepared a StableNet 10.0 server with only one device. And as you can see here, now I select the storages, the service measurement, and there we have one monitor. If I modify the monitor, you can see that a lot has changed in this area of the panel because now we have the ability to define several thresholds for the alarming and not just one threshold as it used to be in previous versions of StableNet. So in this example, you can see that we have one range starting in 0% and going to 10%. So this is our present measurement. And if the remaining space on my hard disk is between 0 and 10%, then a critical alarm should be sent. And if it's between 10 and 20%, a minor alarm should be sent. I can also define additional alarm ranges. So for example, a 30% threshold, and I can change the severity. I have an overall severity bar that shows all the severities in one line. You can also have gaps if you want in your definition. So I could let this start at say 40% and end at 60%. And now, as you can see, I have a gap between these values. Okay, this might not make a lot of sense for free space on a hard drive measurement, but there are other measurements where this could possibly make sense. And now you have a range between 40 and 60%, and I press OK. Since I pressed OK, the measurement thresholds are now stored. For example, if I open the analyzer view, you can see that the alarming ranges or the monitor ranges are also illustrated in the analyzer view. And you see that I'm currently at 52%. And so I would expect an alarm to rise in the next one or two minutes. In the meantime, I'll show you another cool feature of the recently released StableNet version. I'm going to show you how the multiple monitor ranges work in the discovery. In order to do this, I'm going to switch over to my browser and show you uh, this in the new StableNet web portal which you can reach by entering front slash portal behind your StableNet IP port. And this portal has been released together with StableNet 10.0. Uh, we'll explain the web portal, by the way, in another video here, the StableNet snapshot series that'll be coming out in the middle of January, 2021. For now, I go to the new feature of template management in the template editor. So in the first bar of the template management, I simply select the discovery files. Here I have two discovery files and one CSV file, and I select the multiple monitor thresholds as a discovery file. And now I can see how the ranges work in the discovery. So I have the monitor overwrite element, which just states that the creation of the monitors or the modification of the monitors should be updated, and exactly this monitor should be updated. For more information about the filter types, you can read the documentation. The interesting part of this video, you can see the string here. You have ranges that are given by lower and higher level and the severity. The values are separated by dashes and the ranges are separated by commas. And in this way, I can define multiple ranges for my monitors. Here I've written the actual severities, which you can also find in the documentation if you open the XML discovery documentation and search for monitor ranges. The severity here is the overall severity that I showed in StableNet. This is the severity that's applied for all values which are not inside these ranges. And here's the inverted feature. This inverted feature just states that everything that is outside these ranges should be in an OK range. So in this example, providing inverted equals true and severity equals 5000 isn't necessary because inverted true says that the overall severity is OK. This might sound a little contradictory, but we had to keep it this way because we want to keep compatibility with your old discovery files. So this is just a setting to say that everything that is not inside these ranges should be considered OK, and the severity shouldn't be applied to values lying outside of these ranges. Of course, this is also something you can find in the documentation if you want to get more detail or information. Yeah, so let's go back to StableNet. Now we see that my monitor is already in an alarm state. And if I were to wait a couple more minutes, then it would go into the informational state because in the monitor, I set uh, information to get for the informational state. Yeah, so that's it for the quick uh, webinar today. 
on multiple monitor thresholds. I hope to see you in the next uh, episode where I'll present the many of the new features, at least, of the new uh, StableNet web portal, which, which has just been released with the current version uh, 10.0. Thanks for your time. See you for the next video. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe uh, and check out all of the content that we have on our YouTube channel uh, to help you manage and be successful with your StableNet installation.